Hello, everyone. Hi. I can see that there's already 100 people connected. Uh, so definitely a high interest in this uh, subject tonight. So very happy to see you all. And as we're not the 21st of January, uh, I want to wish you all a very happy new year and hope uh, all the best for this new year. Uh, what we can do, yes, like Alexi just did, uh, just present yourself in the chat uh, to say hello and try to create a bit of human interaction in those uh, online webinars. That would be super nice. And if you want to also share where you're tuning in from so we can have kind of an idea of all the great finance leaders and the country presentation, that would be awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks a lot. We're going to think, um, I think we're going to wait a couple of minutes, maybe just one because there's so many already, uh, to allow everyone to tune in. And then uh, I'll present Chef Connect uh, and our amazing speakers uh, tonight. Hi, hi. Munich, Portugal, Belgium, Chicago, Florida, Cologne. I will not pronounce Heidelberg. I tried <laughs> Switzerland, Lyon, San Francisco. Great. Paris. Well, it's very great to see you all tonight. Um, so just a little reminder for those who don't know uh, CFO Connect. So CFO Connect is a global community of finance leaders. And today we're about 5,000 leaders in the community. So really thank you uh, for being there and assisting uh, to all of our events. We're super happy about it. And so CFO Connect uh, was created by Spendesk. Uh, and Spendesk is a spend management software designed especially uh, for finance leaders. And tonight, uh, we're going to talk about a hot topic for everyone, and that's corporate finance treasury and the role of corporate finance treasury, especially uh, in the light of financial crisis. And to talk about the subject, uh, we're going to have Grégory and we're going to have Francois. Um, I'll let them present themselves, uh, present their agenda, um, they're going to talk roughly for half an hour. As always, feel free to ask your questions during the presentation and also more formally during the Q&A section uh, that's going to last for the last 20 minutes or so. We will also push a couple of polls, um, so feel free to answer them. It will help our speakers guide uh, the presentation. So thank you all and welcome, Grégory and Francois. Thanks, uh, Faustine, and thanks for presenting us. Uh, we are really happy to, to, to present to you uh, this topic uh, uh, today. Uh, so, um, just a few words uh, about me, and then I will let uh, Francois presenting himself. Uh, I have about 20 years of experience in uh, finance, so I work in controlling uh, in different kind of uh, companies and different sizes uh, as a CFO for different companies, small and medium-sized companies and larger companies with a group or with no group. Um, and yes, today uh, I created uh, my own consulting company in finance, uh, helping the organization uh, to, to have a professional finance department and helping them uh, to set up procedures, but also uh, some good practices in the different fields of, of finance. So from controlling to uh, treasury. So I'm more uh, the generalist guy and we have the specialist uh, with Francois uh, today. Thank you. Let me just uh, give you a, a very short introduction. So. Um, I'm a corporate treasurer and, and chief risk officer. It was my double background, let's say. Uh, I've worked for multinational companies, large companies as corporate treasury uh, and as also chief risk officer, so the area and part. But today we will focus on the financial risk, not the all risk of the company. But I'm also, uh, for a year now, I've created my own company and uh, it's an advisory company. Uh, I'm also a sort leader. And besides, I'm uh, quite involved in the Corporate Treasury Association. I'm chairing the uh, Luxembourg Corporate Treasury Association, ATEM, for many years. 
since the beginning, I would say. And uh, I'm also uh, one of the creator and vice chair of the European Association of Corporate Treasurers, 23 associations, 21 countries, 13,000 members, and also active in the World Treasury Association. So tonight I will try to give you my view as a specialist of corporate treasury, but also give you a view of the uh, community of corporate treasurers. Given the fact that I'm more specialized for the uh, multinational companies, but also to talk about the small company mid cap, so uh, I will try to give you, a, a, let's say, a, a fair view of the community. Great, thank you. I'll give you the mic once again. <laughs> so just. Um... We try to to define a kind of a field conductor for this presentation, and um, as a CFO in a small or medium-sized company, there is a key question, a key concern, um, and the question is when should we need a dedicated treasurer? Uh, I, I mean, uh, in-house treasurer uh, within the company, and as a CFO, I often played uh, the role of a treasurer. Uh, but it's time consuming because uh, you have to manage uh, the cash flow forecast, you need to manage uh, the foreign uh, exchange, uh, you have to maintain the bank relationship, and it's quite difficult if you don't have uh, a, a kind of TMS, so a treasury and management system, so a, a system allowing you to manage uh, all the different flows regarding your uh, treasury and especially for making uh, the cash flow forecast. So if you don't have a TMS, it's really difficult because you need to play with uh, Excel, so meaning that you need to extract the data from your different system in Excel. And if you need to do uh, a kind of periodic uh, cash flow forecast, it's quite uh, difficult. Uh, if you have to do a cash flow forecast on a weekly basis, you need to extract the different uh, information. So if you don't have a TMS, uh, I would say just try to create a kind of BI tool that you will connect to your uh, different system, the bank system, uh, your accounting system, allowing you to extract on a daily basis, for example, uh, your aging balance uh, of the clients and the suppliers and making your uh, uh, cash, flow forecasts, cash flow forecast quite precise. That's really uh, important. Uh, having that kind of BI tools to make it uh, quite easy. But of course, uh, the Rolls Royce in that case uh, would be the TMS, and I think that Francois uh, will share about it uh, later on uh, during uh, this presentation. So the presentation will be uh, spread as follows with the different uh, topics that you can see here on your uh, screen. And the first topic uh, I would like to share about uh, is more about the economic context. So today, what are the, I would say, the hot topics for uh, a CFO in the current economic context? And I, I would say that today a CFO needs to think uh, about the future. Uh, why I'm saying that? Uh, because in 2020, as a consultant in finance, we helped a lot of organizations of making cash flow forecasts. Because with the COVID period, uh, we noticed that there were a lot of uh, liquidity issues in the mid-term or long-term basis. And this is really important uh, for helping the organization in making uh, that kind of uh, cash flow forecast. That's really uh, key. And most of them, uh, didn't have that kind of exercise. So we really created cash flow forecasts and especially on a long-term basis, uh, basis, sorry, uh, helping them uh, to have a quite good view uh, in 2021 because with the different uh, government measures that were granted uh, in the different countries, meaning that some payments were postponed uh, that you can spread uh, your uh, payment over the time. The liquidity issue is mainly today in 2021. And thanks to the cash flow forecast, we managed to have a quite good visibility uh, in that respect. And for some organization here in Belgium, 
uh, we see that um, they have and they will have some issues in terms of liquidity as from uh, May or June because now they need to reimburse uh, the different payments that were postponed by the government. For example, uh, the payment uh, of the uh, VAT or the social taxes on the salaries. So that's really uh, important uh, as an issue. And uh, what we advised to uh, our client is to try to maintain the bank relationship uh, as from 2020. So when they created the cash flow forecast in 2020, they maintained a good relationship with uh, the bank, allowing them to have a quite constant uh, discussion with the bank and to show that they were quite transparent about the evolution of uh, the cash. And this is, uh, and this has a positive impact in the bank relationship, and not only contacting your banker when you have a cash need, when you need a loan for tomorrow, this doesn't work. And if you have a quite good uh, cash flow forecasting, you can share this with your banker, and you maintain a trust uh, relationship. So that are the main topics that we are currently. Um, uh, uh, that we see uh, at our client today, and uh, uh, those are the main CFO uh, issues uh, and uh, topics that uh, I, I noticed. And I would like to have today the advice, and that's why I invited uh, Francois to have his advice as a specialist about uh, the uh, different uh, topic. Uh, hi, Francois. Uh, hello. Uh, so maybe. Just to come back to, if, if you allow me to, to to your former question, when do you need a treasurer and when do you need a, a treasury management system or dedicated tools? I will try in in the in the, the course of this presentation to answer some of the question at least at the end with with a takeaway because it's 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 an interesting and, and good question and knowing and understood and understanding that we talk to a large community of CFOs and sometimes from SMEs or mid cap uh, uh, companies. It's an interesting question. So do I need a, a, a skilled and dedicated uh, corporate treasurer in my team or, or a team of treasurers? And when do I need a, a tool? And, and there is no clear answer to that. So but the good news, so uh, first, let's see the positive side of the uh, crisis. It put, uh, uh, the, uh, it put the, the treasury uh, department into the limelight. So it's good. Uh, the second thing, it's difficult to answer the question because it depends on different triggers. That could be the size, the number of uh, account, bank accounts, the number of countries you are covering, uh, the different risk you are facing, etc. So it's, it's a difficult question to answer. But it's not because of the size that you should not take care of the treasury. And we saw that it's uh, quite important and we'll explain during the course of the presentation why it's so important and what are the key topics for CFOs, whatever the size of the company. So, uh, and even if it's not, it's not possible to have a specialist dedicated to treasury because you don't have the size to do that or, or the means, there are some solutions and I will give you some tips and some ideas of what are the alternative solution. And the good news also, technology is making a lot of progress and so you have uh, accessible technologies, accessible in terms of technicity, in terms of implementation, but also in terms of cost and, uh, and that's good, and especially with in the cloud solution. So, Maybe to come back uh, to the presentation, uh, Gregory, I do propose to go to the um, maybe the current economic context or yeah. So uh, just to 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 be more general and to have a, a sort of macro uh, uh, picture because it, it it will explain the uh, hot topics and I will explain the hot topics for large multinational companies that also give you an idea of who, what should be your your hot topic. So. It's maybe the worst crisis we have seen in the history and maybe worse uh, according to IMF than the uh, 1929 uh, Great Depression. So I think that the good news is it's not a, a, a crisis coming from the bank. And so the liquidity or I mean the credit crunch is not a risk in this case. And it's important when we will talk about uh, funding in particular. So it's what I call a green swan event, uh, health crisis uh, implying a, a financial crisis. So. As, as you mentioned, so it's a liquidity crisis that, that uh, which could become soon a, a solvency crisis, and especially in 2021, where we'll, let's say, have the consequences of the last year and lockdowns. 
Uh, we've also, we have also a lot of bazooka measure from all the central banks and ECB here in Europe. And, uh, and more and more we have companies with a, a, a degraded situation. Are you gearing? Uh, according to S&P, uh, we all in have, have lost uh, one to two notch all in, in terms of debt because the gearing was increasing, the debt equity ratio. And we have a lot numerous zombie companies that are just surviving with some ads and, and with a lot of difficulties. So that, that's the context. So SMEs could be distressed and it's why treasury could be could be a, a real issue. What we've also noticed that home working was an obligation for all of us and some countries here, and I guess in your country maybe, are thinking about a sort of lockdown or semi-lockdown. So we had BCP deficiencies, no DRP in place. So uh, some has no VPN or, or VPN-like solution. So it was difficult to approve payments, this kind of thing. So we realized that for Treasury, it's a real issue. We can book your uh, uh, accounting operation in one or two days or one or two weeks, not a big deal. But Treasury, it's something that you should do uh, uh, the day uh, you need. If not, you, can, uh, uh, you, you may lose money. So it, it's this kind of situation. And working from home also creates a big difficulties because we have less communication in the team, more fraud, more risk of error, and so we have seen a, 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 an increase of, of frauds over the, the last uh, uh, months. So it's why it's important to reinforce your internal control and to think about digitalization. And one of the positive uh, uh, side of the crisis, it gives you an opportunity to revamp, revisit and modernize your uh, finance function and Treasury is certainly a lab, maybe the department with the most, uh, let's say, uh, sophisticated IT, or the biggest number of IT solutions in general because of the sophistication of our operation and it's an opportunity maybe to start uh, uh, automating the processes in order to reduce your work, to concentrate your work to more added value tasks and also to uh, smooth the process and, uh, and be more resilient uh, at the end of the day. Another thing that we have noticed is that we are more and more dependent of the Excel spreadsheets or equivalent and that's uh, uh, what I call the paradox of sophistication. So technology has never been so fast, so good and, and we use more and more uh, Excel spreadsheets for various reasons. One of the reasons is the fact that you need to export uh, in different tools to reconcile, to make dashboard and to, uh, to make uh, uh, testing, cash flow forecasting or whatever. And so usually you, you come to a, a sort of uh, Esperanto of finance, uh, i.e. Uh, Excel. So that's the context I wanted to, to say. And, and again, coming back to the question, when do you need a, a treasurer? It's not because you don't have a, a, a chauffeur that you don't need to recourse to taxis or Ubers. It's not because you, don't, you are not a restaurant or you don't have a restaurant that you cannot use Deliveroo. And so there are solutions I will mention uh, later on in the, uh, in the presentation. And uh, also using Excel is the only reason why uh, the cash flow forecasting is difficult. Maybe you can explain the different reasons why a cash flow forecast can be uh, difficult uh, to be prepared. But the difficulties around cash flow forecasting is the fact that uh, we have been, we treasurers, we receive a lot of questions from the C-level asking, uh, could you make simulations, stress testing, assumptions, etc. So usually when you do that on tools that are not robust enough, the problem it takes time to, to produce report and take uh, hours or days. Then, as I say, it's not robust, so the risk of error is quite quite big. And uh, uh, only those having a, a dedicated tool could, could be faster to, to react. But Excel is something that we use more and more. That's a fact. It's more because we need something to translate everything. And if you have an ERP or TMS, sometimes it's different formats. So it's one of the reasons of using more Excel it's to find a common, uh, let's say, a format to accumulate, aggregate figures, crunch data and, and figures, and to produce the reporting. So it's a question of uh, the fact also that we receive a lot of new questions, new demand for new reports, and we were not prepared. Yeah, uh, Mark is mentioning uh, the chat that forecasting is becoming more difficult because we have a kind of uh, uh, uncertainty uh, period today. Uh, and a lot of organizations were making cash flow forecasts for a short period, for 30 days or two months. But today, the organization needs to prepare cash flow forecasts for a long term period. That's also a quite good move, uh, I, I think, in terms of uh, managing the cash flow. That's the positive impact of the current context. 
But you're right. So uh, people are used to to prepare a budget. Sometimes it's a rolling budget or rolling forecast with the budget a year plus one, and then they have 20 years. So that the long term cash flow forecasting. You have the short term cash flow forecasting. What we treasure are doing for the next days, next weeks, and then you have the uh, cash flow forecasting. I would say the uh, the rolling 12 months or at least the current year uh, uh, forecast, and that one uh, was uh, very often missing. Of course, the short one, the treasury one, is also missing if you don't have two to, 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 to do that. And, and, and they realized that it was really important. When, when the situation is quite calm and OK, you have some reserve and room. When your situation is stretched, so every single day could, to, could count in your uh, uh, liquidity or access to liquidity. And you rightly say that uh, the reliability of the information had been difficult to, to assess because we know that people are paying uh, uh, later and later. You don't know if they will pay, if they will, if you will deliver, uh, and if the customer will pay or be able to pay some, some uh, order have been canceled. So it was extremely difficult to, to do it, but it's not because it's difficult or more difficult that you should not uh, do that. So it doesn't prevent to, to work on that. And you have also the volatility of the market and the fixed volatility I will mention. Okay, thanks, uh, Francois. So here you prepared a quite interesting chart, uh, but maybe it's more applicable for a big organization. So how can you translate this to small and medium-sized organizations? Your mic is off. So sorry, uh, that slide was just to to uh, to to explain the central position of corporate treasury and to explain again it's uh, in larger corporation where we have all these kind of uh, uh, let's say counterparty and stakeholders. But it's just to to prove that it's really a, a central role. Again, if you are not in a, a, a large company, it's not a reason for not taking care of treasury and you have interaction with uh, uh, external auditors, potentially with internal auditors, with a CFO. Sometimes with affiliates, even if you have a limited number of subsidiaries, and sometimes with a cross-border operation. So again, it depends on your size, and, and but but you have a lot of relationship externally and internally, and so you have a central position with Treasury because Treasury is key for everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you look at this chart, uh, do you think that uh, small companies are thinking about it, and uh, don't you think that Treasury is? not addressed by uh, SMEs, by ignorance. We have some uh, sub working group for, for SMEs dedicated to Treasury to, to SMEs. It, it's very difficult. So uh, the problem often comes from the fact that uh, as soon as you create a company, a finance department, you think about accounting because accounting is the um, single source of truth. But accounting at the end of the day is just a translation of financial operation. You, you take a financial decision. Accounting is just translating the decision into into your books. And uh, we forget that uh, financial decision is it's quite important. Should I edge or not my FX exposure? Should I borrow to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, have some access to some liquidities to face my, my obligation, etc. And again, coming to, to, to my point, so uh, a company could have uh, 10 years in a row of uh, uh, booking losses, but uh, one single day of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, impossibility of uh, uh, getting access to liquidity and to pay your supplier could kill the company. So it's why treasury should be more important than accounting when you think about it. So. Uh, because it's more, let's say, a uh, necessity than, than accounting. I just want to say that uh, it's not one or the others, but, but we should also take care of, uh, of, of, of treasury and it's often missing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So today, uh, the companies have many issues uh, due to the COVID uh, crisis and some priorities. Uh, in the next slide, you are mentioning uh, different uh, priorities, so about uh, foreign exchange, liquidity, uh, world cap, cash flow forecast. So what's the biggest priority according to you? <laughs> and your mic is still uh, off. <laughs> you will see the different uh, um, slide. Uh, I have a slide that uh, to explain what was the, um, the key uh, topics uh, for corporate treasurers in, uh, in the PwC survey uh, that they run every two years. but. But uh, it's quite uh, interesting to see that the priority are not different from what they are in uh, all in. And the top 10 is uh, quite uh, similar. If you compare multinational question today or yesterday and tomorrow, it's the same. 
actually liquidity was the major issue because of uh, the difficulties for some sectors some industries to have access to liquidity and because of the uh, activities that have been completely stopped and maybe not only for a couple of months but maybe for years working capital is really uh, extremely related because working capital depends on your working capital needs and it depends on your uh, account payable account receivable management so we need to be uh, more let's say uh, uh, agile to uh, to play with that knowing that uh, uh, you you have a big risk of not being paid or being paid later uh, we have also an environment of negative interest rates so if you have cash maybe you can make a better use of cash rather than to pay uh, interest for your cash being deposited with with a bank because it's a current situation Cash flow forecasting is also linked because if you want to manage properly uh, uh, the working capital, it's important. And a fix because we had a, a high volatility of the market, not big move in the market, but high volatility and especially intraday volatilities, where uh, we had a, another dimension in the uncertainties we, we were facing. So to me, the four major issues, but you can see in the, in the next slide, if we have time, that uh, there are some uh, some others. You mentioned bank account man management; it's, it's quite important, and uh, and also the um, digitization because we need to for complying with the new regulations, with accounting, the speed of uh, of the business, and the uh, and to face challenges to also automate the processes. Because the two major lessons we have learned from the crisis is. You, should, you need to more to centralize more your operations and you need to automate the processes that's two of the major uh, let's say uh, conclusion we we draw from the crisis yes the liquidity is quite uh, interesting uh, because a lot of companies in 2020 uh, made poor uh, results uh, uh, and the priority wasn't the results, uh, the net results, uh, the the accounting result, I would say, but the liquidity uh, was really uh, important. Huh? Uh, so uh, accounting is looking to the past and uh, the treasury is looking to the future with uh, a good liquidity. Uh, maybe that's a priority that was quite common in different uh, small and medium sized companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, 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 of course, but, but the liquidity, it's the same issue for, for everyone. So the, the, the size of the problem and the size of uh, uh, the credit facilities and uh, the equity you need, etc., are the same. But at the end of the day, a gearing is a gearing, uh, credit facilities is credit facilities, headroom is headroom. So I guess the situation is uh, quasi the same. Maybe the access to some capital market and some operation depend on your size. So if you're an SME, you don't have access to the capital market but, or to syndicated loans, but at least you can, or you cannot issue a bond, but at least you can uh, have access to credit facilities. And, and there are some means, for example, having some committed credit facilities could be a good way to ensure your uh, access to, uh, to to liquidity. And a lot of companies were, let's say, under a size in terms of credit facilities. So it's not during the storm that you should set up your credit facilities. It's before the storm and make sure that they are committed and not just a credit facilities uncommitted. Thank you. Maybe uh, you would like to comment uh, uh, the treasurer who is the forgotten guy within the companies? Uh, I, yeah, I, I, actually, uh, I keep thinking that uh, our profession of corporate treasurer, it, it's a rather young profession because it started even if we have the, uh, some, some, uh, some records of uh, uh, the, the, the world treasury from the ancient, ancient Egypt. Uh, uh, Treasury, for a corporate treasury function, it's, it's was a brand new and it exists for, for, let's say, 40, 50 years. The solution, the IT solution for maybe uh, 20, 30 years. And it's quite important because often it was a bit forgotten. It's also the nature of, of corporate treasury. But again, each crisis, and it was the same in 2008, in 2011, and, and former crisis, even after the uh, uh, dot-com bubble in, in the 2000s, our opportunity for corporate treasurers to to be uh, in the light and to uh, to uh, to remind to the management that uh, it's important to be uh, properly uh, managed and so to to be the guarant of the uh, liquidity and the uh, the mitigator of risk because we are specialists of uh, let's say financial risk uh, management mitigation so 
and we also are used to quantify this risk and to find solution to uh, uh, to uh, to reduce the exposure to uh, to this risk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, what about credit lines? Uh, uh, we can see that uh, some companies are quite uh, afraid to have poor liquidity, so they are asking uh, for loans to the banks, but at the end of the trip, they have a very good treasury position. What's your advice about the fact of asking for loans while your treasury is quite sufficient and quite enough uh, to sustain your day-to-day -day life? Uh, 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 again, uh, having been also a banker in my life, so uh, the problem with some companies, they, some are really uh, under, let's say, uh, sizing, undersizing their, their credit facilities. And again, a lot are uncommitted where we should have committed credit facilities, you should also diversify your source of financing as far as you can, because a small company has no access to or direct access to the capital markets. And the second thing, the risk is to be so under, let's say, uh, sized or to be oversized. And I also know companies having uh, a large and huge credit facilities that are not using. If it's committed, you pay commitment fees, so maybe it's not financially speaking efficient, but better to pay uh, an insurance and a premium for the insurance if you don't use it, if you, you can pay for it, uh, that, then the opposite. So I would prefer to have a company uh, uh, oversized in terms of credit facilities and, and not with one bank, because also the risk is to concentrate on the one counterparty, because if they change a the strategy or they face problem, or they decide that you are not enough a good customer for them, so you can be in trouble. So you always need to diversify your, uh, let's say, counterparty. So, the risk of liquidity, we have liquidity in the market and we have banks and we have no risk of having a, a default of bank, in my view, not today. It's not a credit crunch, but you need to be prepared. And again, diversification and also to find the right capital structure. Because a lot of SMEs are odd under, let's say, capitalized and that's a problem because they don't, don't think in terms of uh, the proper, uh, uh, let's say, weighted average cost of capital. So they are uh, under uh, capitalized where a lot of multinational companies are over capitalized and uh, you need to find the the, the right uh, say the right balance uh, depending on your industry because there is no single answer fitting to all sectors but to find the right balance between uh, the debt equity and your debt to have the long term and short term debt to make sure that you have a, a, a sound structure and you are not financing long-term investment with short-term debt. Okay, thank you very much uh, for, for this. Uh, just a few words about uh, the FX rate and the role uh, of uh, the financial risk management of the treasurer uh, regarding the FX rate. So uh, some small organizations are uh, exposed to that kind of, uh, of risk. Uh, what role can play the treasurer or the CFO if you don't have a treasurer in terms of FX rate? Do you have some advice uh, for this? Well, FX rate, it's a major one. Uh, again, it, 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 not depending on the size, it's depending on, on the proportion of the FX risk in your, in your activities. Uh, are you buying or selling uh, currencies? And maybe uh, and we know that today we have a, an international business, so you are exposed to, to, to currencies, I'm afraid. And even if you are in the state or in, in Europe uh, uh, and you have a, a common currency, uh, it's not sufficient. So being exposed, and especially uh, with the commodity uh, 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 let's say sector being uh, coded in, in dollar, you are exposed to the, the currency. So. Uh, a lot of SMEs are not uh, prepared because they have no clue about uh, the best way to, to manage the FX risk. So my recommendation would be if you don't have the expertise, it's maybe to have recourse to specialists or to ask to some people, advisors that could give you some idea and some tips. There are things that could be done quite easily. And, and uh, I'm always surprised to see that company with a decent side that are not, let's say, uh, forecasting and, and forecast uh, edging their exposures. Although they know perfectly uh, that they have firm commitment of balance sheet commitment or, or on balance sheet commitment that they should edge. And so there are techniques, there are solutions. Uh, uh, when we we'll talk about solution, I can mention solutions like Cantox. I know them quite well for having a dynamic edging. So you can outsource part of this risk and use machine to make sure that you can uh, be edged. But there are simple things that you can set up, 
uh, forward contract basic products that could be useful to make sure that you secure your 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 budget because if you are selling in dollars so maybe you can be disappointed that over the last year the dollar was growing weaker and weaker not against the exotic currencies but again euro the end will continue for a while despite the new uh, uh, president and the same with uh, look at russia and, and turkey if you were dealing with russia and turkey you've seen that <laughs> Russian ruble and, and Turkish lira have been uh, completely out of control for a while. So, uh, so that kind of risk could be managed. And ask if you don't know, ask to 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 your banker, to advisors, and there are simple products you can use to to protect that and to uh, make sure that you will be secured. Because if you try to be invoiced or to invoice in your local currency to avoid the risk, it's not a, a, a good piece. Not, not a good piece of advice to give to, to the company because you can be sure that the counterparty will try to take the protection and increase and inflate the price to uh, reflect the risk they will they will bear. Yeah, and sometimes sometimes it can be quite uh, easy and simple to implement that kind of solution. So we had a client uh, asking for uh, liquidity solutions uh, to us, and. Uh, we help uh, we helped that client to uh, use a factoring line. So uh, we created a factoring contract and we negotiated a factoring contract. And uh, there are two kinds of uh, contracts in that factoring. So in euros and in GBP, uh, allowing the client to have a kind of protection because uh, you get the money today when you invoice the client and you have a specific uh, a bank account with the factoring in uh, pounds in GBP. So uh, it can be a double solution for the, the client and it was a double solution. The liquidity solved and finally we solve uh, the second uh, thing regarding the FX rate. Exactly. Um, sometimes borrowing currencies, if you expect to have uh, uh, income in currencies and investment. So there are solutions and basic solutions, but, but it, it has to be addressed because uh, I guess that the volatility of the FX market will remain for a while. And so the risk is to uh, prevent to export and to work with uh, foreign markets or to be stopped or to be killed because if you have a, a low margin business, that could be a, a killer because in a day you can uh, swallow your, your margin if you are not protected. Okay, thanks, Francois. So, time is running. So, uh, I think that about the financial priority. So, here we have a nice chart, but you already uh, shared about uh, the big priorities, the major uh, ones, yeah. Emergency mode, and uh, I think we have the visibility uh, on those priorities. But we will share the presentation later, so you can see uh, that uh, chart uh, later. Uh, maybe. Again, a few words about uh, the liquidity uh, and the liquidity link to the equity structure uh, of companies. So small companies have small uh, equity structure and how can you solve that kind of liquidity issues linked to the equity that can be poor in small companies? No, but uh, uh, again, I, I give here, uh, let's say, more, let's say, global uh, view of large multinational companies. But but the problem of the one could be also uh, uh, a view for for and, and apply to to smaller companies. So uh, again, what we have noticed during the crisis that, as I mentioned, not enough committed credit facilities, and the risk is that the bank could decide suddenly to 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 remove the uh, credit facilities. Uh, uh, I've saw also a lot of companies and some of my customers having uh, what I call the Abbe Imbef syndrome. So they were, let's say, uh, getting the maximum of uh, uh, money from all their credit facilities, uh, drawdown at 100%, even the committed one, what is completely crazy, but it was a fact. So they were paying on one side the, for, for borrowing and on the other side for placing money because we have a negative interest rate. So. Or you have the carnival compromise, as I call it, where you give a lot of guarantee to your uh, bankers. Why? Because you give guarantee in a distressed period. And why also? Because you don't have this uh, capital structure. A lot of companies I, I've seen, and I guess you, you saw in your portfolio, uh, are undercapitalized. So you need to have a sufficient level of, of equity, something that you need to plan before the crisis and it was was not efficient and again if you don't have access to to liquidity you can also play on as we said on working capital you can improve your and reduce your capital working capital need 
despite the fact that we know that the uh, period of payment and the tenors are longer and longer, unfortunately, but I, I guess and I hope for a while. So there are techniques to accelerate. Uh, I mentioned dynamic discounting, uh, the new uh, techniques for trade finance, a lot of banks, BNP Paribas, it's a good example, are extremely dynamic to deliver a better solution to faster and, uh, uh, let's say, accelerate your financial supply chains because the faster and the shorter your uh, supply chain will be, the better for you. You can increase your turnover and uh, limit uh, your risk. And again, uh, having a good cash flow forecasting coming to your initial point uh, will help also to, to, to prepare and to prevent. What is important is what I call the uh, cash conversion cycle or the cash conversion factor. You, you need to get that in mind to measure, to also to see if you can improve. So it's important also to have KPIs and we treasurers are used to have some KPI, KPIs in, in place to see where we have some problem and to have some alerts because the treasurer is a, a sort of a, a tower of control where they could alert before the accounting book a loss that we have a problem and we, we should we should react. So, so it's quite important and to make sure also that uh, if you are edged for the FX, FX risk, that uh, sometimes some deals were canceled or postponed, some container were blocked in China. So you need to also be able to unwind an FX, uh, uh, FX instrument if you are edged. So, so it's quite important to be more proactive, to, to think, uh, to anticipate the problem while, rather than to be just uh, reporting past events as oh. a container doing. Okay. Uh, as a conclusion, maybe, um, and as an advisor, uh, as you are, um, what are the lessons that we learned and what is your general uh, advice about the different priorities, uh, about the needs, the, the things, uh, the things that we need to do today? Yeah, but I, I will go rapidly on the in order to respect timing and to answer question, if any, so about the lesson learned and uh, uh, my recommendation of being back to the basic, and to okay. the basic approach. But at the end, I'm ready also to give you some uh, takeaways and tips for smaller companies uh, because it's uh, our target today. So uh, in terms of lesson learned, so as mentioned, automation, centralization, the best answers, even if you are a small company, uh, uh, and even more, you have a, a problem to uh, or liquidity risk, so you need to have backups and to think and to have a sort of uh, a B plan and, and BCP in place. So it's it's really often missing. So what if and, and be prepared for this kind of uh, of case. So uh, uh, too often we think about the C being calm and when the storm is coming, so we are a bit uh, 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 surprised. So we also notice that uh, it's a lesson from the crisis that the low uh, let's say a low tech treasury uh, organization or low tech uh, 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 companies in terms of finance organization are more exposed than the others. So it's a reason for being more digitalized. In terms of payment, just to give you an example, a lot of banks are refusing manual payments. So you need to have, uh, uh, let's say, automated and electronic payments. And so there are ways and means to easily, especially with a PSD2 and API, for example, you can. Uh, with an API connection, you can connect to the bank and make sure that you use uh, a connection or at least a nose to a solution to uh, have uh, uh, electronic payment. So it's important in the future, it will be difficult to be onboarded by a bank if you don't have this kind of minimum technology. So it makes sense to do that. It's just a question of uh, of not only on, on risk management, but a question of, of, of uh, survival. And, uh, and again, this digital transformation from the old finance department, not only treasury, but it's quite important and a lot of companies are just uh, starting. Again, don't be too dependent on Excel spreadsheets because mm -hmm. it's robust, it's too, it's too individual, it's too risky uh, tools. Uh, and again, there are solutions, but I'm ready to talk about a few ideas and tips uh, that are uh, easy to, uh, to implement. Okay. Thank you, uh, Francois. Uh, so uh, I also noted uh, uh, a conclusion that you shared with me uh, when we prepared, uh, when we prepared uh, the seminar. Your conclusion was uh, nothing will never be the same tomorrow, but we need to be prepared for the changes. And I see a comment from Mark in the chat, and it's quite the same conclusion. The key is not to predict 
to predict the future, but to be prepared for the future? Uh, yeah, no, clearly to, 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 be, uh, to be prepared for the future. Again, I, I think it's the kind of thing that we, we need to, to understand. So if you survive a crisis, what I hope for all of us, uh, we need to say, okay, what should I do to be more resilient? What should I do to avoid this kind of stress scenario? Because I know that a lot of CFOs and a lot of treasurers were really uh, depressed for, for a while. So, and there are solutions. So it's not when it will be calmer, calmer time to, uh, to, to revamp and to revisit your organization. And uh, in terms of, uh, of takeaways or tips that I would, I would give, so even if you have a small organization, why not having a sort of, uh, a sort of uh, mini audit? And it's something that could be done quite easily. It, it's half a day to th so three days for larger com companies to see what is your organization and what could be here and there uh, the quick wins and what could be implemented. And there are solutions. And if you don't have the structure, how could you set up and be a company to develop your uh, your your solution? So, I don't know if you want me to to give some 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 tips, but uh, I think that we need first to demystify treasury. And uh, uh, very often in the treasury organization, and when I meet uh, some SMEs, I have the impression that they consider that they are too small. It's not for us. Uh, it's for big companies. Like if it was something inaccessible, and and it's not true. Mm -hmm. and compared to the uh, uh, sport car competition, it's good to have this kind of competition because it develops the uh, new technology that at the end of the day will be uh, translated to your own car. So it's important to see that uh, multinational companies are working on solutions that at the end of the day will be also deployed by banks. Uh, I mentioned APIs and the new solution by fintechs. And the new technologies give a lot of solutions, fintechs that are really accessible in terms of implementation, in terms of uh, understanding, more, let's say, user-friendly with a different uh, user and customer experience. And, uh, and we need to demystify. That's uh, an important uh, point. So first, to, to have a picture of the situation, what could be improved, then to demystify, not to be afraid. And, and potentially another solution that I would recommend it's uh, it's to outsource. Why not using solution like uh, uh, what I call the uh, EK type solution, where you can get access to a tool, but you can also get access to a, a product that also in, be implemented by someone else, or to rent the treasurer, or to use uh, uh, the uh, treasury as a service. Is what I call the TAAS uh, treasury as a service, where companies are trying to give you access to tools and to accompany customers uh, for doing so. We in Luxembourg, we are in a country where uh, the, uh, we have a PE and VC, the alternative fund industry, the second largest in the world after the US. I can tell you that it's an industry that is typically like SMEs, unsophisticated in terms of treasury management. And uh, it's good to see that this kind of industry could have access to solutions. So we need to pass this hurdle of, okay, not for me, yes, it's for you, but you need to find the right tool and to be maybe advised to talk to a specialist to make sure that you find the right products to uh, fulfill your, your your needs. And uh, and again, I uh, have uh, the, 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 the system as well. And what kind of uh, system, what kind of tool? And this is a question from uh, Luis. Huh? Maybe we can move to some questions. Yeah. Uh, a question from Luis is what kind of tool do you suggest for a company having uh, four to ten different banks? So you have different banks. So how can you manage in a tool the bank accounts from uh, different uh, bank companies? I would. Uh, uh, I would suggest for for small smaller company. I would suggest a new technologies. I will not go into the uh, uh, big TMS solution because these guys are. Like in boxing, they are just playing the uh, heavyweight categories, and so they are tapping this kind of customers. I saw recently one of my customer, uh, 100 million turnover. He tried to launch an RFP to get access to proposal for implementing a treasury management system, and the big players, the usual suspect, refused to even uh, answer the RFP. What is uh, uh, quite amazing. So you need to find a good system that are better fitting and fulfilling your needs. And in terms of TMS, for example, so the way to manage day-to-day -day cash management, liquidity, this kind of thing, bank account or six to ten banks, why not, or more. Uh, you have a treasury solution, I think about uh, Fennec, I know, A352, where there are many solutions that could play a role of TMS. 
And the beauty with the new technology, it's easier to implement. You rent, you have a SaaS or in the cloud solution, and some are even giving you access to the payment because it's not another module, it's the same module you can connect to the bank. And so via API Connect, via uh, ABIX, via Swift on some cases, via host to host solution, you can be connected to, in the example, your 10 banks. And then you can manage from your ERP or treasury management system or any source of payment. You can manage your payment and flow your payment on a secure way to, to your bank. So that's the kind of solution. You mentioned cash flow forecasting. There are many, many solutions really accessible in terms of price. One of my favorite one is Cash Lab, but uh, uh, you have also Cash Force, uh, Cash Fact, uh, Cash Analytics, everything with cash uh, uh, solution scenario or Tiger. I know well Tiger. Tiger is an excellent solution. So you have many solutions in different areas. And if you are well advised, you can have access to this kind of tool and prepare uh, in a more organized way a cash flow forecast. If you start from a, a, an empty Excel, that could be difficult. If you have this kind of tools, it's more organized and at the end easier to do. And then you can make some assumption, stress testing, and this kind of thing. And, and we also have, yes. yeah. also, we also have uh, some uh, uh, system, so ERPs that are suggesting some cash flow solution in an integrated package. What's your advice about an integrated uh, cash flow model TMS? within your accounting or within your ERP system? Uh, okay, that's that, uh, another question. So it's 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 one of the big debate uh, in treasury management system. And if you are interested, I, I wrote an article on that. So you can find that on my my blog on, on, on my LinkedIn. Um, it's a big debate. So should I go for a full ERP integrated solution like SAP, Oracle, PeopleSoft, for example? or some of the mini ERP, because some of the TMS providers these days, like uh, FIS Sungarn uh, or uh, E.ON, are quite integrated and offer different modules. And the, the other side is to go for the best of breed. So for the larger companies, I would say, OK, go for the best of breed could be a, a solution. Sometimes you are forced because you have already something in place and you cannot change your ERP uh, from one to the others. Again, is SAP, for example, the best solution with SAP for an It depends on your site. Maybe it could be, a, a, let's say, reserve or more dedicated for larger uh, companies, I would say, larger groups. If you, are a, you know, if you are a smaller group, I would say the best of breed could be the best approach. Or to go for the, uh, let's say, low-level uh, solution that are provided by fintechs that could be cheaper uh, and easier to access, easier to use, to implement. And, uh, and at the end of the day, I, I don't, I would not recommend to go for an integrated solution if you have a, uh, if you don't have a, a sufficient site because it could be counterproductive and quite expensive. Yeah. And the best of breed has some virtue and value vis-a-vis -vis integrated solution. Integrated solution is good when you have uh, already a, a, a sufficient site and when you want to make use of your data, it's easier for for data mining and data engineering. If you have SAP, of course, it's easier to uh, make predictive analysis and to use to make use of your data. If you don't, it requires an additional layer of solution to make use of the financial data. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Faustine, I don't know if we have the time for last question. Yes, yes, yes. I think we can maybe answer. What about Geoffroy, who has a question? Um, so he's asking, what kind of treasury strategy would you recommend a post-seed tech startup that is fueled with VC funds? Because he doesn't see any bank offering a credit line to company with such liquidity risk. Uh, yeah, it, it, it sounds, j j just a, a comment on that. So uh, it's true that in some sector, it's really difficult. It's, it's why. If you have not prepared that before the crisis, you can be in a, in a really distressed situation. Uh, I was discussing with a, a, a fast-growing company uh, in the sector of mobility, uh, recently a German company based in Cannes, and so I was surprised by their uh, expectation and the difficulties to set up credit facilities. Because sometimes it's not because your situation is not good, but maybe you are going too, growing too fast compared to uh, what the bank expects. So in the two cases, you need to diversify your credit facilities. And again, it's difficult to have access to some 
Same if you don't have a certain time to, to set up. And again, it's obvious if it's a distress situation, it's always more complicated than when you anticipate and do that when the, the situation is it's, it's, it's better. But again, um, there are many ways to, to diversify your source of funding, and it's uh, one of the best uh, piece of advice. Don't look too much at the price, look at the uh, security, and one of the big, uh, let's say, solution for mitigating risk, I'm talking about the chief risk officer, it's to diversify the source of funding or to mitigate your risk by uh, having a different uh, access, because some market could be closed. Again, if you have a small company, you have no, no access to the capital markets or private placement or uh, high yield debt. So that could be uh, uh, tricky. And again, some banks are also adapting their strategies for SMEs. So it's why for SMEs, it's really a, 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 a key problem to, to get access to, uh, to great facilities. Another way is to get access to the private equities and to find uh, new investors Maybe that could be also a solution to, to get fresh equity. Um, question? Sorry, yeah, yeah, there's just Robin who just asked, could you repeat or write down the TMS for SME you just quoted? He got Cash Lab, Taiga, but not the others. Uh, just uh, I repeat for, for cash flow forecasting, I, I can mention there are many, huh? so and uh, without advertising for these guys, but uh, 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 cash lab it's uh, cash flow forecasting. You have cash force, I radius, uh, taiga, um, a scenario, uh, cash analytics, cash fact. Some I, I know you have also some TMS solution. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about one I know quite well, it's a Luxembourg based company A352. Uh, 352 is have also payment, uh, uh, let's say, functionalities and, and mini cash flow forecasting. Uh, Fenex, so there are many. Uh, Stonex also offers some solutions. So there are many solutions. Again, we, we need to discuss, but uh, I'm ready to answer this kind of question. And maybe another tip I forget to mention, uh, Faustine, if you uh, allow me, but. 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> Go. A free, a free piece of advice and very easy to implement and to do do have access to your treasury uh, uh, association in your country you certainly have a treasury association you have ATEB in belgium ATEB in luxembourg you can have access you can be member but you can follow have access in my association we give access to our content uh, uh, mainly or exclusively in english to uh, whoever is interested to participate to conferences and to to discuss with peers because by discussing with peers you can also discover what others are doing Big or small company or similar company and you can also uh, access to, to some specialists so in some cases when you need to select the, the tools it's good to, to talk to specialists and to see what could fit your, your needs because there are many many solutions but the good news more and more solution in the let's say low level categories and uh, you have a big gap so you have the big players for the big multinational companies very expensive and you have a sort of uh, uh, big gap in between, and then you have solutions that today are easy to implement, even to rent. And again, another concept that, are, that is coming and makes sense in my view, it's the concept of outsourcing or renting a, a treasurer. That could be another solution to have access to professional, to educate your team, and uh, without investing too much. Because the problem with the TMS, it's uh, like an ERP, it's quite expensive to buy or to implement or to uh, to rent if it's a cloud solution. And quite long, quite long to implement as well. Yeah. Yeah. For for some, again, the beauty new technologies are faster to implement uh, and better uh, user uh, experience. Uh, and when you you use the uh, classic big uh, instruments that are good and, and feeding the need of large multinational companies, it's extremely expensive and as you rightly say, it's long to implement. It's faster than in the past, but it could last. One of my customers will have a, a two-year program to implement a payment factory a treasury management system. It's a big uh, private equity, but, but still it's, it's quite complex. It could be quite complex. Okay. Well, I think we're just on time uh, for the people that ask questions and that we couldn't answer today uh, we'll share the contact of both Grégory and Francois so really feel free to continue the conversation with them um, after the webinar 
I wanted to thank you all, uh, you behind your screens and Grigory and Francois in front of your screen uh, for this great webinar. Thanks for sharing your wealth of expertise and ex experience with us. Um, and thank you all very much. If ever you feel that having more information about the tools um, for TMS, for example, or like cash flow forecasting could be interesting, really send us a message and we'll try to make it happen to find benchmarks for you or different advices from community members. Um, so once again, thank you, Grigory and Francois. Thank you for hosting us today. Of course. Thank you very much, everyone, and we'll share the replay as well as the get uh, the deck uh, that we shared tonight, so you have all the information. Thank you very much, and have a very lovely evening. Yes, have a good nice evening. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks Bye. A lot.